last weeks, Madam Deputy Speaker, my inbox has been flooded with hundreds of letters from my constituents. The strength of feeling amongst my constituents is undeniable, their arguments are heartfelt, their conviction is deep-seated, and for good reason, I share those arguments and I share that conviction. Of the thousands of letters and emails I receive, there is one from Mia Thomas. With your permission, Madam Deputy Speaker, I would like to read extracts from today. I am a 21-year-old medical student, and I have just returned from five weeks in Ramallah in the West Bank. I'm feeling increasingly helpless and frustrated as every day the death count of innocent Palestinians grows higher and there seems so little we can do about it. Our government will not act decisively. By contrast with Gaza, Ramallah is very safe. It's in Area A, so in theory it's completely Palestinian run and governed. In reality, even at the heart of Palestine, it is still an occupied territory and violence erupts at checkpoints with scary regularity. From where I was staying, you could see Jerusalem. Ramallah is only 19 kilometres away as the crow flies, but the journey there takes an hour because Palestinian buses are only allowed to use certain roads. And then you have to pass through a checkpoint where everyone's IDs, passports are checked at gunpoint before changing onto an Israeli bus to carry on the journey. This sort of thing isn't particularly harmful to one's health and is viewed as just a hassle but it also creates a feeling of being completely caged and unable to move. As a foreigner, I was visiting cities within the West Bank which local friends hadn't been to, not because of lack of funds or curiosity, but because people are afraid of getting stuck outside their city as checkpoints can be closed at any time. The occupation has limited people's movements physically, but it also massively limits people mentally in what they perceive they can do. In a village further north near Nablus, I met the mayor of a village who was a wonderful man. He was in a wheelchair because of a, as a young goat herder, he was shot in the spine by Israeli soldiers from the military camp which looms over the village. He now runs the village and has an absolute rule of no, press, no protesting or fighting with the Israeli settlement which is nearby because, as he said, he doesn't want anyone else, Palestinian or Israeli, to lose the ability to walk. He says, just existing as a village is resistance. In the last year, the Israelis have demolished three houses in the village, and as they try and rebuild them, you can see how, life, how hard life is when just living and farming your land is an act of defiance. I'll give way. I thank you. I thank my honourable friend for giving way. She's making a very powerful speech, and indeed, hundreds of my constituents have also written in on this matter. And it was discussed by the Hounslow Ramallah Twinning Association last Friday night. Does she also agree with me, however, that there is a downside to us not supporting Palestinian statehood today, which is that, in fact, that it could give succour to those who actually do not want to see a political settlement? I, 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 I agree entirely um, with my honourable friend. If I might say, Mia concludes her letter with the following. I'm so angry about what is going on in Gaza. Most people are, I think, which is why I'm confused as to why it's being allowed to continue. If this cycle of hate and violence is ever going to end, it has to start now with an end to the, of the killing of Palestinians and Israelis. Ms. Thomas is clearly a very brave woman. She came back impassioned, she came back disillusioned, and she came back angry. That anger and disillusion wasn't just about the conflict that she'd witnessed, it was the frustration that those of us in this house were not giving her a voice. And today, I want to give her a voice in the same way I believe we must give Palestinians a voice too. Will my honourable friend give way? Um, does my honourable friend agree that the UK's recognition of Palestine as a state will give a tremendous boost to the most moderates in the uh, state of Palestine and will also strengthen their voice very significantly amongst the international community. I totally and utterly agree with my friend. It is time to recognise a Palestinian state, a right they have long deserved, and it is time to use that recognition as a path to a wider process of negotiation. Two equal states living side by side in peace and security and sharing prosperity. We cannot stand here today, say we believe in this goal, this two-state solution, and then stand by and refuse to recognise one of those states. 
I encourage the House to take the opportunity and support the motion before us today. Yeah. Well,